This is my time I'm on the rise Can't hold me down, I'm too fly This is my time Ready to shine Brighter than all of the lights Cause when it's game time Seconds away and the game's on the line There ain't no doubt in my mind Beating the buzzer like This is my time This is my moment You better bet that I'm on it Ready and set, I'ma own it Blast it to ten, then keep going There ain't no coaxing, I never settled on play Put in the kettle to flame I go a hundred all day Foot on the pedal, no brakes Women's basketball here at the University of Rye Grand Also known Rye Grand College uh, in its earlier years First of all, and what people don't realize and understand, that women's basketball was played here in the 20s and the 30s. We have we have pictures of that. We have proof of that. It wasn't until recent modern times, uh, as a result of the Title IX, as I understand Title IX back in the 70s, women's basketball really got its heyday start around here at the University of Rye Grand or Rye Grand College at that time in about 1972. And we had some great programs in the early early days. I personally started my coaching here with the women's program in 1992. Um, took over for Doug Foote, who had established a, a really good solid foundation. Um, and as a matter of fact, in the first year, 92-93, um, you know, we won 27 ball games, uh, won the league. Um, did not get to go to the national tournament the first year. Uh, the second year, uh, we won 26 games, um, won the league again, and then went to the national tournament. So that started, that jump started uh, in my time, in my era, uh, the national tournament uh, drive. And that's that's what we want to do. We, this program has not won a national championship, and that's what we want to get accomplished. And, you know, the, the Basketball has always been important here and has always been very successful over the years. All the coaches that have been involved uh, in, in women's basketball. And, and I'm blessed that I have been able to spend about 31 years of that transition here at the university with this program. And the fact that uh, from 1972 till present, um, we are a, as a team, uh, as a program, we just got a winning tradition, and that's always been in this program. Uh, in my 31 years, we've averaged about 21 to 22 games winning a year. Uh, we've had two losing seasons, so we feel that we have the program and, and the winning and the, the culture in order to do that. And in order to have that, uh, speaking of culture, you got to understand players coming in here and, and we make sure that we choose and pick the right type of player to come in here. First of all, they got to be true to themselves. They have to be true to themselves, their, their personal life, their family, their religion. That has to be number one. They got to be uh, happy there. Um, got to get the job done in the classroom and, and our team has been a great team academically uh, getting the job done. And then, of course, basketball has to be pretty important as well. So if they can juggle all those things, then that's the type of player that we want to have in this program. So I want to talk a little bit about the program for the women's basketball team. It's really amazing. We talk a lot about succeeding in the classroom so that you can succeed in competition. Um, Coach Smalley is always bragging to me about their team GPA. It's usually in the 3.4 range as a team, which is awesome. Uh, but even more than that, he ingrains them in the community in so many different ways. He promotes servant leadership and they're always out, whether it's picking up trash or preparing for the Rio Bean Dinner or uh, visiting the roof to see some of the young ladies playing in there. They're just very ingrained in the community and we like to say we're building better people and Coach Smalley is doing that and his team and this program is phenomenal. I would love if I had a daughter playing basketball for them to play for him. So I want to touch base with uh with our own women's basketball coach, David Smalley. 31 years at any position is a long time. David Smalley has had a ton of success here at Rio. I think we all look back at that. First, he's alum. The idea that the passion that he brings to the game is details that he has for everything that he does and the way that he expresses himself to not only the community, uh, the students here on campus, and his own team bringing them all together to produce what a fantastic uh, display of women's small college basketball. 
he needs to be commended with this and with the idea that he is he's at the top of his game right now. People may be thinking about him retiring. He's not even close to that. He's just getting warmed up. And the idea that the success that they are currently in, that's part of what he has built here at Rio. And it's just so good to see all of the excitement and to see his passion to continue to grow about the game, about his student athletes, and about everybody around him. Congratulations, Coach Smalley. In the scouting report, we checked off boxes, but we still have three boxes to check off. River States Conference Championship. The first ever pod, first and second round national tournament championship. And then March 18th. Two seasons. Coach of the Year. Coach of the Year. After transferring from two prior D1 colleges, um, you know, my self-esteem was pretty low at that time. Uh, talking with Coach Baez, Coach Smalley, and Coach Markham um, throughout that process really made me kind of want to fall in love with the game again and uh, find really where I belong. And uh, getting here, you know, meeting the team, uh, the atmosphere, the more family than, you know, just an environment of the community. Um, it was beautiful and it really made me learn way more than I thought I could ever learn about myself and uh, You know, I'm really thankful uh, where I ended up and where I'm at and the journey that brought me here um, I was pretty low uh, in my life when I decided to come to Rio and you know, I put a lot of trust in the coaches and my team and uh, they, they really helped me grow as a player and as a person and we've worked, you know, we've been through a lot together and uh, coming here has really changed my life. And it's, uh, it's a, I couldn't thank the university or the people anymore. Uh, Ellis Games Player of the Year. So there are many reasons that I picked uh, Rio Grande as the college that I'm attending now. Um, obviously, I had many other options. Uh, Cedarville and Malone were both D2. And a lot of people get caught up in the, uh, they're kind of just like, if you don't go D1, D2, you don't go anywhere to play basketball. But I'm here to say that it's totally not, not the truth. Um, I picked Rio. Um, coming on the visits, just going to different colleges, Rio was the one where I walked on campus and I just immediately felt like uh, welcomed by the whole entire team and coaching staff. Um, they pretty much just took me under their arms as soon as I walked on campus and I felt super at home, um, pretty much just as I did at Wheelersburg. So this was just overall my best fit. Um, I love the coaches here, the players, um, the seniors at the time, they really just welcomed me in and I just love the players here and the coaching staff. Hi, I'm Grace. Um, I transferred to Raya from an NCAA D2 school and I'm really glad that I did. At my Division II school, um, I just wasn't treated very well. Uh, it was a rude awakening coming from high school because I'm, I'm a redshirt freshman. Um, uh, coming from high school to college, you have like these expectations that it's gonna be um, a really fun experience to grow in your sport. And then um, you get there and that's not always the case for student athletes. Um, I was treated as like a product, as something that could be disposed and um, it was really hard because I fell out of love with my sport. Uh, so I decided to enter the transfer portal, uh, give it another shot. And so I, then I came to Rio and I'm very, very glad that I chose to come here because that's not how I get treated anymore. I get treated like a human being. I, I have a lot of fun with basketball. Um, it's been really hard coming back to the sport uh, because of my last experience, but I have a coaching staff here that's really patient with me and very understanding and it's just a feeling like no other to fall back in love with uh, with basketball. So um, yeah, glad that I came to Rio, happy to be here. 
I say when I was first being recruited by Ryo, I was a junior in high school. I came on a visit. They were playing Asbury, which was a rival in the conference at the time, and the atmosphere when I walked into the gym for this game was amazing. I mean, I walked in and there was students, there were families, there were just, I mean, people were there, people were loud, and I think that, you know, the environment is what led them to that victory, and once I left here that night, I knew that, you know, Ryo was one of the places that I wanted to be at. It was a place that, you know, felt like home, and being from a small town in high school, I was, you know, the big dog coming out of high school. I was, you know, the leading scorer for the team. I helped lead my team to multiple different things. And I came in and I knew that I was, you know, going to struggle because I was a freshman. But I had an injury my senior year where I tore my ACL, MCL, and meniscus. And I had it all repaired. And I came back in about September of last year, which would be my freshman year. And I was playing behind China Chambers, which was a fifth year senior point guard. And for a minute, I went down this hole and I didn't know if I wanted to play basketball anymore. I didn't know if basketball was for me and I just really struggled mainly because coming from an injury and then going from being someone, you know, that was up there with their school, up there with their program to being, you know, a backup. But once I realized that it was going, it was only going to better me, that's when I realized that, you know, this was the place for me and this was the place that was going to help me grow and become, you know, the person that I am today. I'm from Parkersburg, West Virginia. I went to Parkersburg High School. Um, during my career in high school, we won two state tournaments, my sophomore and my junior year. But when it came to my senior year, COVID had hit, and so we only played the first round of the state tournament, and then they canceled it. So when I was kind of figuring out whether I was going to college, going to play in college, when I came to Rio, it was something that they talked about a lot, that we're not here just to play basketball and enjoy life, like we're here to compete. We wanted to win, we had goals set, we wanted to win championships, so being at Ryo, that was really important to me and I wanted to continue that out. We got a three quarter, but we gotta be, gotta be aggressive. You know we can get that arm bar in there and we got to be here, we got to be here and get her away from this sweet spot. This is, this is not good for us. It's good for her, not good for us, all right? Questions on that? Uh um, coming from Russell, it, the expectations were really high for me because we came off of a six-year winning districts and two years of going to state, winning region. So coming to Rio, it was kind of a, the expectations were a lot higher here because you're expected to perform every day. For me at Russell, it was kind of like, not handed to me, but it was kind of like not exactly something that was hard for me to earn. But coming here, you had to work every day, earn it every day. and. Ryo is also a very high-level team. We're good. Um, we beat records. We're doing all the uh, everything you expect at high level, and yeah, it's a lot of fun. Coming to Ryo has been um, one of the best things I've ever decided to do. Um, I'd never actually heard of it before. Um, I called it uh, Rio Grande the first time Coach Bias had called me to talk to me and try to recruit me, and he instantly clapped back and was like, it's Ryo, like Ohio. The first time I ever spoke to him on the phone, I had no idea who he was and he was on it. <laughs> um, but it's weird, I'd never heard of it. It's only, I'm only two hours from home. Um, it's a cool place. Ryo kind of reminds me of uh, my high school. It was small, very um, family, community-like, and everybody knows everybody, and people come out to support. All right, so let's go with uh, number 11, Lavender. Number 11 is the new point guard. Um, she's a point, she likes to go left occasionally, but she'll shoot to, she'll shoot three, we'll have to play her first shot, and then a box her and pressure her. Yeah, she shoots threes well, but she's selective, which is okay. That means if I'm close to you, she's not gonna probably fire one up, which is good for us because we're covered. All right, and then we're gonna drive. It's like eight and four, and we have got to get that first step. So if she takes that first step and now I'm here and we're shoulder to shoulder, who's got the advantage? She does. So as she's taking that first step, I've got to counter with that first step and not let her get a straight line drop. Yeah, What's one, the one move that I'm, I, 
kind of impressed with it. What's that one move? It's that little hesitation in and out, upper body, and you know, the person's down and she gives that hesitation upper body and they take that this direction and she crosses it back over there and she goes. Drive. Drive. Yeah. So, several things with five right here. We know that five can shoot that jump shot, she can drive, and also if she's there, the problem it's the high low time. They love running sets where she catches it right here, she squares, she can drive, or she has a post player. That could be 45, 12. High low. High low. So next one. Thumbs up. Thumbs up. So go next group, come in. Are you ready? Oh, yeah. Uh, thumbs up. Thumbs up. Thumbs up. Thumbs up. Thumbs up. Thumbs up. Thumbs Last group. Last group. Harley, it's a good pin. That's a great look. We get those opportunities, we're going to be fine. Uh, threes down here, Reagan, Darnell, Ella, Lavender. Rest of you X outs down here. Here we go. Hand off. Hand off. Stop that drive. All right, subs, here we go. Hey. Subs. Hot. Yeah. Take five, baby. Hey. Hey, if they're not putting a lot of print, okay? So try that. Or if I give it here, if you go down, we just got to move more more. Yeah. Oh, ah. Hey, hey, stop here, Greg. to talk about my coaching staff. Coach Markham, Brooke Markham, River Valley High School graduate just up the road here. I, I remember Coach Markham in her high school days. What an unbelievable athlete. But I thought maybe 
we could convert her <clears throat> from the inside to the perimeter. And that was my goal and my desire for her. She ended up coming here and playing here at the University of Rio Grande for, the, for, for me uh, and graduated. She was one of three players that scored over 1,000 points and over 1,000 rebounds. And after her illustrious basketball career, where she was a, a key figure in our success during her era and then setting records, she had the bug to coach. And I was extremely excited to include her into this program. And let me tell you something. Coach Markham does all the, the facets of running a program. She has ownership, takes ownership in who she is and in this program. She does the little things. She thinks like me. She, she takes care of everything. And she is becoming a great X and O coach. She is our head coach of our reserve program and get, gaining that experience. Um, she's becoming a, a, a very resourceful and a good recruiter. And I'm so pleased that she is in this program. And she is one of the stable, uh, the, the, the foundation blocks of who we are. Uh, again, I, I want to talk about the ownership that she takes of this program. And I am blessed to be uh, a head coach and have somebody like Coach Markham in this program. So uh, going 62 and 7 in our last two years, um, and before that, we're, we're even on our third straight trip to the national tournament. I think something that's key with all that is our coaching staff. Within our coaching staff, I mean, you have Coach Markham, uh, local, played for Coach Smalley and myself, and now is one of my coworkers as, as a coach on, on the coaching staff. And, you know, this is the first time I've ever had a player uh, join a coaching staff that I've been a part of, that I actually coached. So it's been great watching her growth as a player, uh, being one of only three players in program history with 1,000 points and 1,000 rebounds, into being an elite coach that she is today. And, and you know, her work ethic was se second to none as a player. And it's like that as a coach. Uh, there, there's things that she uh, shares more so with Coach Smalley and their preparation and work ethic and what they take uh, interest in compared to me. And I think that's what makes the University of Rio Grande so successful is we all three bring something different to the table, and Coach Smalley knows how to utilize that and bring it all together for the product that everybody sees each night whenever you attend a game. And I think as uh, the years keep going by and we stay together, it's only going to strengthen uh, into what we have now, and, and, and that's competing for the conference championship every year. Uh, you know, uh, Coach Markham has really, really honed in on our post players, and we, we've led the country uh, or been in the top five for the past three, four years, and it's because of her preparation of working with the post players uh, night in and night out. Uh, you know, I'll look down there when I'm working with the guards and she'll have six, seven, eight pads out just padding them to death. And it's like, you know, if you can handle that, you should be able to finish when one person's hitting you in a game. Um, and, and then you should be able to grab a rebound if eight people are hitting you with a pad and you do that. So I, I really think the key to us being so effective uh, with our triangle of uh, – post players that we've done the past few years at shooting over 50 percent, 60 percent is uh, through the preparation of Coach Markham and it's only going to grow and uh, you know uh, she's really starting to hit the peak of her coaching career and uh, as long as all three of us stay together I, I see many, many, many more uh, successful seasons here at the University of Rio Grande. Coach Bias, who is my recruiting rec coordinator and does a tremendous job. Uh, Turn back the pages of time, there was a gentleman here in our men's basketball program, uh, Jeff Williamson, that um, was working for the men's program. And <clears throat> I was in the market for trying to find a graduate assistant or somebody to come in. And he said, hey, I got my buddy back in Boone County, West Virginia. This guy's name is Brandon Bias. And I thought, OK, it's, send him up. I want to talk to him. Well, he came up for an interview, uh, inter had a lot of energy. Uh, as my daughter would say, he's a car salesman. He can sell ice to an Eskimo, so to speak. Uh, had a great interview, uh, came in and has been here. Uh, had one stint here for a, a couple years and then he ventured out 
uh, became a full-time assistant at University of Pikeville, and then he came back. Um, I've been blessed with great assistant coaches over my tenure here at the University of Rio Grande. Uh, Coach Bias is one of the best, if not the best, recruiter that I've had in this program. And he is primarily responsible for the great talent that we have currently right here in this program. Uh, does a good job. He's also a good on-floor coach, X's and O's. And, um, you know, I'm excited that he's in this program. Um, and I hope that he and Coach Markham stay till I am gone. Um, who knows what's going to happen? I know that the, the basketball world is calling both of their names, and who knows what's going to happen with them. But in the moment, I am blessed. I think I have the best coaching staff in the country. They free me up to do what a head coach should be doing. And I'm excited about uh, Coach Bias, his recruiting efforts, <clears throat> uh, always bringing up ideas, fundraising concepts that uh, I'm an old old school type of guy, and uh, he, he motivates me. He, he keeps me going, keeps my juices flowing a little bit uh, and venturing out into this technology world. So I'm blessed to have Coach Bias in this program as a, a head recruiter and uh, hoping that uh, he, both of these coaches stay till the end of my tenure. Working with Coach Smalley and Coach Bias is uh, kind of best of both worlds. Um, you know, Coach Bias does 99% of the recruiting. Um, he does, you know, he handles a lot of the um, games of scheduling, that kind of stuff. Um, I kind of do behind the scenes type things, uh, the scheduling, the ordering things. Uh, making sure we're on time and that kind of stuff. And then working for Coach Smalley, uh, most people would think that it would be hard, but if you're an organized person, he's probably one of the easiest person to work with. Uh, I've really enjoyed working with both of them. I have learned so much with my years being here, especially as a player and as a coach. It's been a joy. So talking about the big guy, the guy that runs the entire program, Coach Smalley, man. That guy took a chance on a dude from Boone County, West Virginia. Uh, I was coaching high school basketball, really wanted to get a shot at uh, making the move to college. At the time, I had a, a, a childhood friend, Jeff Williamson, who was on the men's basketball staff, and he linked us up together. And, you know, uh, between Jeff and Coach Smalley, I wouldn't be here today if it wasn't for those two guys. So uh, Coach Smalley is, you know, he's, he's unique. <laughs> Uh, from the aspect of, you know, he, he teaches you to look at every single detail. Uh, you know, me, I want to go to my ADD and fast-paced stuff, and I just want to overlook stuff sometimes. But, you know, I'm glad that uh, he laid the, the foundation of, of me being a college basketball coach and not forgetting the details, the minor things. It's always the little things that add up uh, on game day. So, you know, I, I've learned to put in many hours, to always be early, uh, the lessons that he's taught me are bigger than basketball, but uh, uh, in the game of life. And I'll always be appreciative of that. Um, and, you know, as long as we all stay together, I see uh, many, many more successful seasons. But, uh, you know, as long as the big guy's leading it and he, he micromanages me and Coach Markham, we all three, again, bring different things to the table. But, uh, you know, we, we've been able to do back-to-back 30-win -back seasons, and that's going to be the goal for next year uh, under his leadership. I, Coach, go ahead with what you got there. Yeah, so, again, this just needs written down before you exit uh, underneath each player's name. This is their statistic against us, what they did. This is Desiree White. Again, this is the heartbeat of the team. We stop her from scoring. I don't know where it will come from. If she's the one getting the, the rebounds and the assists and you stop her and her play goes down, they go down. Her last three games against us, 19 points, three rebounds, 35 points, 10 rebounds. That was last year's championship. 30 points and seven rebounds. Okay? And, and, I'll, and I guarantee you what's going to happen is the same thing as last year. Conference Awards comes out and she ain't going to be player of the year and, and she's going she gonna to go out and she's going to show who. That's what she did. That's what she did last year. And that, she said that during warm-ups, like she was pissed about it. So you want to make sure that you do that. The last three matchups versus Midway, 99 to 89. Okay, we had that.
Okay, 95 to uh, 86, 79 to 81. We won all those, but everything kept getting closer. This is the last shot that they have at us this year. And I mean, beating us means something. You, how did Oakland City celebrate? We drive in there but among the sequoias, and we did that in Oakland City. What's going to happen? You're going to get blocked. So if you want to drive in there, more power to you, but it's got to be a jump stop, and you got to make something happen. You Um, my time here at Rio is coming to an end. Um, behind me here, uh, this lovely hill is, uh, you can kind of see the dead grass um, where me and my teammates, you know, blood, sweat, and tears uh, throughout these last two years I've been here. Um, 50 plus hills, um, you know, it's all hard work that we've been doing, you know, to make it where we're at now and uh, continuing this. Um, you know, coming in here, uh, Coach Bias, Coach Molly, Coach Markham all told me you know, how we treat this kind of exactly just like a D1 program. And uh, coming in here, you know, that's exactly what we got. We got sidewalk runs, we have, you know, time miles, and then hills. Yeah, 50 hills to uh, where we're getting us where we're at now, you know, working hard. Um, there were times where we didn't want to get back up and, you know, keep going. But then we remembered last year and, you know, that feeling at Nationals losing. And then, you know, we, we really owed it to our fans, our families, our team, each other. Um, to get back to the grind, and that's really what we did. Um, and you know, getting the chance to host the conference championship game tomorrow, and then you know we have nationals. It's everything we've worked for, and I'm I'm very excited for that and everything.
ball over. Get tougher than what you are right now because we are soft. They're going to let you play. We got to be better than this. We have to be better than this. I'll give you an example. There are three for friggin' 12 at the free throw line. Three for 12. So that's nine points they could have had, which would put them up four right now. They're not going to shoot that poorly at the free throw line from this point on. And they're getting there because we still refuse to turn and box somebody out. They have they got 24 rebounds, 13 offensive rebounds. How does that make you feel? 13! Okay, so you're tired because we just went 10 trips and then we're trying to throw a loft pass. Loft pass and cross court passes are like, they're hard. One is because of strength and one is because of touch. And when you're, when you're fatigued, your touch isn't what it usually is. It's, I mean, it's like the end of practice. So you're, you're doing the right thing up here, but it's just like we've got to slow down just a little bit. I mean, we had four turnovers at first quarter and then 12 in a second. Once they get one, it's contagious. Eight. Hey, Take a chill pill, and she's when she's burning you off the side. She's burning. I mean, it's not your fault. There should be help there. So don't put that blame on you. Um, what I am, I put blame on you. And one thing, I just want you to be acceptable for it. You don't have to have a bit of talent to box out. And I ain't talking about jumping over people. I'm talking about putting your butt down and boxing somebody. All you gotta do is put a butt into somebody. This is your chance to be like, you know, I'm gonna take my aggression out. Just box out. We're gonna do the right things. From here on out, this is the game you're going to get every time. If you want to be the best, we've got to be able to handle stuff like this, and I think we can. Okay, we got to get the ball. We have, you're, leaving, you're leaving her and her wide open, or you leave them hanging, okay? Don't leave them hanging, okay? And not only that, you don't have to go for the kill shot every single time. All right, so inhale, exhale. Let's come out third oh, All right, and let's go. go.
participating tonight and awarded all conference second team are from the University of Rattling, sophomore, number 12, Asia Williams.
Bulls were the regular season champion of the Super Athletic offering an overall record of 21 6 into the tournament. They will match up against the 13th seed Wolfpack, which is the seventh seed to have been offered for the Super League champions, with an overall record of 72. They will match up against the number 13 seed of Golden Eagles of John Brown. The number four seed, the Dual Quadrants, oh, and the Red Storm were the River State's tournament champions with an overall record of 28 3. They will take on the number 13 seed of Santa Cena Hooks. Oh, 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 oh,